Hi friends and welcome. Today we are here to watch season 5 episode 9 of Buffy <laughs> and I'm not really looking forward to this one because I'm very scared right now. I was just thinking a lot about the last episode. I think that was one of the most like touching episodes we have ever seen of Buffy. This scene right here in the end of the previous episode where Buffy admits that she can't break down is just it's just top notch. <laughs> I don't, guys, I'm so anxious. I don't want to do this. I really think this was one of the best scenes we have seen in all of the Buffyverse. Whenever I think of like these meaningful scenes, I always go back to Lie to Me. I think of, you know, the scene of Buffy and Giles at the cemetery. And I feel like this was another one of those scenes where it's like, I don't even know what to say because it was just so great. But it's just, I'm <laughs> so worried for Joyce. The name of this episode is Listening to Fear. And listen, if we're gonna listen to my fear, then we're fucked. And this is why I have been procrastinating reacting to this one. Usually I am like so excited for Buffy days. I just, I love this show, right? So every day that I get to see an episode of Buffy is already a good day for me. Not today. I'm really scared Joyce is gonna die this episode. And if she does, I just don't know how to cope with myself. This was such a huge thing in the previous episode that it would be weird if this episode wasn't continuing that in a way. The watch order doesn't go to Angel, so I feel like this episode has to be focused on like, you know, continuing the Buffy storyline. I just really wish that this week was an Angel episode. I could use a break from Buffy for a sec. I really wish we could watch Angel right now, but the watch order says Buffy and I'm obedient. My one hope for this episode is that they find out sort of how to fix Joyce, what's sort of wrong with her, and that, you know, she's fine and well by the end of the episode, but it's not looking like that. Like, I feel like they're really, really leaning towards the whole Joyce might die thing and I'm hoping that it's like a decoy that they're trying to get you to think that so that you're so relieved when she doesn't die but at this point I am freaking out a little we're at oh god like we're almost halfway through season five which is kind of crazy this is right about where the tone of the season usually starts switching and you know twists start happening and stuff like that so uh the Joyce death is seeming each time a little bit more like it could be real, but you know, I'm gonna stop talking and just watch this episode. No predictions this episode other than I think this is a Joyce-centric episode in which we might follow through with what's happening to her and I'm really scared that it's gonna end with her dying. So that's my prediction. I have never wanted to be wrong more in my entire life. I'm usually wrong with my predictions, so that gives me a little bit of some reassurance. So we should go into this episode. I thank you all so much for watching. And let's do it. Fuck! No. Don't want to do this. 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 It's fine. I don't know what else to do. I have to watch it. I, I can't skip an episode, right? You guys wouldn't let me. I'm not procrastinating. Listen, you two, I know this oh, cream spinach is pretty delicious, but I promise I won't be offended if you go out for some real food. Are you kidding me? This is the good life. You're the one who insisted on teaching her to talk. <laughs> oh, hello, Dr. Kriegel. Um, you know my girls, Buffy and Don? Yes, of course. You two are becoming part of the regular crew around here. Jazz keeping her company. Good. Just be careful you don't wear her out. Oh, don't worry about that. I woke up exhausted. There's really no more exhausted to get. Well, maybe some good news will help. The blood work's come back from the lab and everything seems fine. So we've scheduled your surgery for day after tomorrow at 10 in the morning. How's that sound to you? I feel like so scared. I feel like this is good news, but I don't know. I really don't need you to stay here, Buffy. I know you've got patrolling to do. Not tonight. Tonight I have mom taken care of to do. Besides, Riley's filling in for me with the others. I am sure they have everything under control. I mean, they're trying. This reminds me of like the season two opener where it's all of them fighting except for Buffy, where they're trying to deal with not having her around. Nice! Willow's killed like two. Oh, what a rough night. <laughs> I got the two of them. Yay on me. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Except 
part where I was all terrified, and, and then my bees are all dizzy. But I think I should get points just for showing up. Unlike some Riley Finn who shall remain unnamed. If that was disappointing, things would have been easier if you'd been here. I swear to God, if Riley's up to some sketchy shit right now, like I don't, I'm worried about Joyce. I don't want to care about Riley right now. What the hell? Bruh, he's gonna get turned into a vampire like this and I don't have stability to deal with this right now. Like today we're sad dancing. I don't feel like dancing to the intro. I'm still worried and emotional. Two seconds later. I lied. I can't not dance to the intro. Now, let's see who's next, Dawn. I believe I have oh, something no. here for you. Headache? <laughs> no, no. Just a little one. Biggish little one. Go on, what else is in that sack of goodies, Willow? All right. Dawn, to keep you busy. Oh, spells. Thank you, Willow. <laughs> you got her a book on spells. Is Donna gonna become a witch? I don't even know if I'm gonna take that exam. I'd rip it in half and stick it in bed with me. What? Come on. You know, I think I'm gonna take a little rest now. Okay. Uh, we'll be right outside if you need us. And after the operation, no more pressing. She'll be all normal all the time. Is that right? Hey. Santa doesn't lie. Santa is a lie. <laughs> There's no data. There's no pictures on this one there. What is the data? Oh, shit. There's no one in there. Buffy? Come on, honey. Don't worry about it. Okay. I feel like Dawn looked like she almost believed him to some extent. So I wonder, does she feel like something's wrong? Cassiopeia. And a big pineapple. Um, you know, I'm not sure I remember that one. Oh, it's it's a major one. See those three bright stars right over there? Yeah. The real ones never made sense to me. I sort of have my own. Teach me. See those stars over there? They're so cute. Short man looking uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's see. Oh! Make a wish, Joyce is fine. Oh no, that's a meteor. Never mind. Are you kidding me though? But an actual meteor, this is I can't deal with this right now. What? Are you kidding me? Holy shit, what the fuck was that? Oh lord! Oh fuck no! No reason to get upset? Oh right, sorry, I must just think there is because of my brain tuber. Here, Don, why don't you get something from the machine? God, ugh. Even if it would mean some work for you, taking care of her? Oh, thank God. I'll do it, anything. There are medications to administer. I'm afraid you won't get a lot of sleep. I'm not much of a sleep person anyway. Can we go now? Let's go now. Oh, hold on a minute. I don't like this idea of Joyce going home. So, uh, we're all thinking the same thing, right? Oh. Festive pinata? Delicious Did that candy? Monster come from Something inside the meteor? Something crashed to earth in this and then broke out and slithered away to do badness. Oh god, if there's no way an alien is going after Dawn, I really don't need this right now. These writers are not listening to me. So what do we do now? We can't call Buffy. I want to call Buffy. You can't. She's got life stuff that has to come first. So, so we'll just figure this out ourselves. We're experienced. We should explore a bit more. Head into the woods for a bit. The butt <laughs> research. Research. Much better idea. Yeah, I think that's a good call. Could have been some other cases like this. I'm gonna stay here, examine the body some more. Look around a little bit. I'm not trusting Riley right now. No. I need to speak to the man at the desk. This is it. 
This is Riley Finn. You have an Agent Miller, Graham Miller. He'll tell you who. Yes. Emergency frequency. What the hell? Riley, wait. Oh, this man. That is such an ugly mo- Are you kidding me? Riley, did you seriously- The fact that the first time they hit like a problem or something, his guts is to call them, it was just- She looks like a fucking ghost with this white- Yeah. Nope. Don't touch me. You- You sing. Um, please. Get away from me. You're nothing. You're- You're a shadow. Mom, I don't know what you are, how you got here. Mom, oh, it's Dawn. Oh, Dawn? Honey, what's wrong? She's just tired. We all are. Ah. Uh -huh. Go to sleep. This is the second time people have seen the truth about Dawn. I feel like that means it's about to come out. Maybe she's gonna be the one to realize. Not just mom. People. They keep saying weird stuff about me. Call me a thing too. And there was another one. The weird guy outside the magic shop. Said I didn't belong. Said I wasn't real. Why does everybody keep doing that? What's wrong with me? Nothing. It's not you. I think there's something that happens in people's brains when there's something wrong. It's... it's like a short circuit. And it makes them feel like nothing's real except for them. It is not you, okay? And if anyone says anything like that to you again, don't listen. Even if it's mom. I hate it. I know. Just don't listen. I really thought she was going to tell her the truth for a second. Here, here. Primitive people used to believe that the moon was a cause of insanity. Sometimes they would pray to the moon to send a special meteor to fix the problem the moon had caused. These meteors were expected to quell... The madman. The man in the woods. He was a mental patient. I wish that someone had bothered to tell me that there would be tennis being played. I just didn't know. Those eyes. Those eyes. They're like gasoline puddles. Tell me. Tell me because I need to know why. Why are you staring at me like that? Interesting to see Buffy's music choice though. This is not what I would have pictured she would play while cleaning the dishes. something but she really took it into her own hands go dawn Basement's full of junk, and me being in need of uh, junk. You were stealing? Well, yeah. Can't exactly work the count on Burger Barn, Wait, can I? Wait, those pictures of me? Oh my god, Spike! <laughs> Teamwork, okay. I really don't like this monster. In 
everything's gone. You promise? I promise. <sighs> everything's all right. Everything's all right. Poor Buffy, man. Sir. It's strange. A body might ask what exactly it is you think you're doing. He might ask what all this was meant to accomplish. Because to a humble postulant, it looks like chaos. Get out. Sir. What? Sir, is he the one who called the the? the Sir, forgive thing? me. I just want to understand why summon the Queller. What do you think? Because I'm cleaning up Lori's mess, just like I've done my whole damn life. Are you kidding me? Not you, fuck! Oh my god. I mean, I thought maybe the doctor seemed a little sketchy, but not him. Fuck. Buffy, I, I want to ask you something. And if I'm if I'm being crazy, you just tell me, okay? You got it. And I had not not a dream exactly, more like I had this knowledge. It, it just came to me like truth, you know. Even though it didn't seem possible, it, even though I shouldn't think such things. Shit. But, at dawn she's not mine is she no oh she's she does belong to us though Yes, she does. That's such an interesting way to see it. Then we have to take care of her. Buffy, promise me. If anything happens, if I don't come through this... Mom! No, listen to me. No matter what she is, she still feels like my daughter. I have to know that you'll take care of her. That you'll keep her safe. That you'll love her like I love you. God. Well, this feels like exactly what oh. you'd say before you fucking die. My sweet, brave Buffy. <sighs> okay. Well, this is totally fine. I'm so glad Joyce didn't die. Not sure we're headed in the right direction because I'm still a little bit concerned, but I was genuinely feeling like this episode was it for her. So I'm really glad it's not. Where to start? <laughs> um, it was a lot, but less than I thought. So that's good. I feel a little bit calmer, I think. I know that there's still one more episode sort of in this Buffy run before we head into Angel. I'm still pretty nervous about that. The ending of this episode very much made it feel like the next episode is going to be us dealing with the outcomes of Joyce's surgery. I think if this was all like a really big joke to see how I would react to Joyce dying, I do think the next episode we're going to figure it out because she's going to be fine or something like that. Or I think if they're actually going down the... Joyce might die spiral, I think she might die in the next episode. So I feel like the next episode is really going to let us know what's in store for us and how that's going to affect season five. So, you know, I thought that watching this episode would help get rid of my anxiety, but right now it still feels like we're in a limbo or in a little bit of an in-between, which really makes me feel like I should watch the next episode soon. But again, I feel very much like I did in the beginning of this episode. I'm not quite sure I want to keep watching because I'm still very anxious. I'm not sure I want to get the answers of the questions that I have in my head right now. And I feel like this episode was just so unfair because I was clearly concerned for like Joyce's well-being in the sense of she was sick and I was already concerned about that. And so the fact that they would make a monster of the week go after Joyce it's just a little bit outrageous and I don't know why these Buffy writers are trying to attack us like that, but 
I was definitely overwhelmed. Just the Joyce storyline was already doing it for me. The tensions were already like as high as they could be. And so bringing in that whole other like extraterrestrial storyline is just, it's a little bit too much, but it's okay. I dealt with it. I definitely expected this episode to be a little bit more, I guess a little bit more emotional just because I really feel like the entirety of the previous episode, I was crying inside. It was a really hard one for me. And I was very worried that this was going to be a similar feeling than that. And even though there were definitely some scenes, like especially in the beginning and the end, and I guess some places in the middle too, um, where it definitely felt like I was crying a little bit inside. It was different. Maybe it didn't hit me as hard as the previous one, just because there was such a shock factor in the previous one of everything that was happening. And I feel like with this episode, I had already seen a little bit of all of that in the previous episode, so I guess I was more expecting it. I was a little bit more well prepared. I don't know. I do feel like I should talk about this monster very quickly because he was one of the ugliest bitches we have ever seen. He reminded me of a combination of just so many monsters we've seen, like the one from Sanctuary. He was a creepy ass dude. I am glad we don't have to see him again. Uh, but I feel like the most interesting part of this monster is just the fact that he was like extraterrestrial or like sort of an alien of sorts is really interesting because I feel like that broadens so much of the monsters that we can see in this show. It feels like they're going down a different route of just like opening so many different possibilities. It was also interesting to see that um, the intern doctor boy child is the one who, you know, convoked it, invoked it. I can't speak. I'm still, yeah. It was interesting to see that it was him because I feel like there was a moment, you know, when the doctor was sort of letting Joyce go home that I was a little bit concerned about this doctor man because I was like, does this really feel like it's the right decision? Because of course she's doing a great job of taking care of Joyce, but she can't provide the same level of support and help that like a whole hospital with people on staff 24 seven can. You know, I was just, you know, the trust issues were coming out and I was thinking maybe he could be doing something evil and he could be planning this or like giving Buffy the wrong meds or something like that. But it seems like I was a little bit on the right track with like betraying doctors, but the wrong doctor. So I am sorry to that man that I doubted him. But I have to say that I didn't like it didn't even cross my mind that the intern boy would be like in on this and just sort of evil. So I'm really curious to see how that storyline is gonna pay off because it feels like he is such a support system for Buffy right now. Somebody that sh understands what she's going through in a different way. And so I'm really worried about what he's gonna do. The fact that he's in cahoots with like, I think her name is Glory. Seems like she might be a big part of season five. I've still been trying to figure out like, what is this overarching season five theme? And it really feels like they're leaning towards it being Dawn and Glory. There was so much of a Dawn talk that I'm really excited to go into because um, first of all, seeing Joyce, Dawn and Buffy is just the most adorable thing. And I do feel like I'm starting to feel more for Dawn because at first, you know, they sort of bring her in so suddenly that I had a hard time seeing her as part of the family, but seeing how everybody treats her as though they're part of the family. And I guess maybe even this ending and the realization that even though Buffy and Joyce know that she is not actually blood related or something, like they still treat her as a family. It makes me feel like, yes, she is part of the family now. So I feel like this, this episode might've really made me notice that like, yeah, I'm, I'm into Dawn. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain this. I just mean that like, I feel like she was a little bit more detached from the family to me, but I guess maybe seeing this whole thing of Joyce being sick and he, seeing how she's always there in the scenes where it, I would have imagined that it would be Buffy and, and Joyce alone really makes me feel like Dawn has been fully introduced into the family. I see her as more of Buffy's sister than I did in the beginning of the season. Like, I think I'm growing to like her more. I'm growing more attached. Like, I'm concerned for her well-being. And, you know, I feel for her when she's anxious about people judging her and stuff like that. I'm really starting to like Dawn more. And I think that she's bringing out the best sort of dynamic in the show because getting to see Buffy being so protective over Dawn is so adorable, you know, because I feel like she's really having to step up right now with everything that's happening to Joyce. She's the one who needs to sort of be in charge. And so it's sweet that she's not only taking care of Joyce, but also having to take care of Dawn. Like the scenes in between them are just so cute. The fact that they're always at the hospital, you know, and I feel like it was such a small thing, but also the moment where the doctor even implied that maybe they could go home without like Buffy even saying anything. Joyce knew she was going to say yes. She knows her daughter so well to know that she would do that for her. Like Buffy is really 
putting herself out there, doing everything that needs to be done. Like, I genuinely feel like after I watched the prom episode, I was like, there is no way I can love this character anymore. Buffy is just the best person to have ever existed. And then now I feel like season five is making me develop a different kind of love for Buffy that I didn't know was possible to be developed inside of me because I really thought I had reached the peak of my love for Buffy, but she keeps breaking that ceiling. You know what I mean? Like she's just, I love her so much. And I feel like the storyline is bringing out what might be my favorite storyline for Buffy yet, which is to see her have to get a different side of responsibility. Cause I feel like Buffy has always had so much res responsibility on her plate because you know, the whole Slayer thing, but having to see her step it up at home to is a really big change on dynamic because I feel like while she's so used to being in charge when it comes to slaying, having to be in charge of the household is a very different thing. And I guess not having that emotional support at home, which I feel like Joyce provides, but now she needs to provide, like it really shakes things up. It's really interesting that this episode really seems to be going down the route of people are finding out about Dawn. I think it's really interesting that while both Dawn and Joyce sort of had their doubts and noticed that something was up this episode, she only told Joyce the truth because I was actually really curious to see if Buffy was going to tell Joyce the truth or not because I feel like, you know, they had established that it was safer if nobody knew the truth and stuff like that. But the fact that Joyce just knew is really interesting. I feel like it makes sense this would be an interesting moment for her to find out because she does seem like she's going back and forth in reality. And honestly, I still have my doubts about this like brain tumor of hers because while it could very much just be an unfortunate side of life because yes, people get sick um i still keep thinking maybe there's a supernatural reason behind it and maybe i only hold on to this because it would mean that it could be fixable a lot more than if it's just a brain tumor and i like that joyce knows the truth and still accepts and loves dawn the same way i think that helped me accept and love dawn the same way and i feel like that's the same realization i had when buffy finds out the truth and still embraces her and still wants to protect her so I think it's so interesting that Joyce and Buffy had the sort of same reaction of finding out the truth and of course being shaken up by it, but not letting it affect the way that they feel about Dawn and the relationship that they know that they've built, even if it seems to be sort of based on a lie and not exactly 100% truth because the past is not really real. So I just think it's very interesting and I feel like it adds up in the sense of Joyce raised Buffy and taught her, because in a way, you were so influenced by the way that your parents raise you. There's no doubt about it. Even if you, if, even if it means going against what your parents should have taught you. And so I feel like it's interesting that Buffy reacts very similarly to Joyce. It just makes me feel that Joyce raised her in a very good way. I was editing Restless recently. I was so convinced that, you know, this entire season was going to be about talking about the spirit of the first slayer. And I feel like they dropped that completely. And this Dawn storyline really seems to be taken over her and glory and stuff like that. So I'm really curious to see how things are going to be able to change right now, since we know that um, people are starting to know the truth about Dawn. Cause I feel like the more people find out, the more we're gonna have to talk about it and invest on that storyline. Cause I feel like now that Joyce knows and Dawn feels like she's gonna find out, I think that this is a realization that Dawn might have on her own. Maybe she's gonna go into research and stuff like that. Cause she's been seeing how much they do research. But I do feel like this is meant to come out sometimes. So I feel like the squad, you know, Willow and stuff, I feel like they're going to find out soon because it feels like this was the episode that the, the barrier in between like it being hidden is starting to be broken. I feel like the scene of just Buffy doing the dishes and crying is just so sad because it shows that like she can only let her emotions flow when she's alone. And like this entire storyline is just way too sad for me to know how to handle but I feel like they're doing such a great job with it. The emphasis to family this season has been really interesting because I feel like we started talking about that maybe in the episode, you know, family. I feel like we started talking about how important it is to have like this found family. And in general about this squad, it's always interesting to see them not be able to rely on Buffy because I feel like whenever that happens, it's just really stressful. And at the same time, I always want them to talk to Buffy because I feel like she also deserves to be in on the loop because it helps her. Like the fact that she didn't know this huge ass slug alien monster was coming for them is not exactly helpful. I feel like it's a tough line to balance though of not wanting to worry her, not stressing her out versus not realizing that she was in trouble, like could be in trouble and stuff like that. So it's gonna be interesting to see how long they're gonna keep that going of having Buffy sort of take this time off from being a slayer, which is what it feels. 
I'm not used to this now that I'm talking about it. I feel like this is the first time in the show that we're really seeing her take a break from it, right? I feel like we have seen it maybe in like very small moments and episodes, but I feel like this was already a two episode, which I'm going to guess goes into a three episode arc of Buffy really just taking the time to be with her family rather than being the Slayer as we're so used to. And I think it's interesting because it shows a different side of her in regards to like vulnerabilities and having to be strong in different ways because I feel like we're so used to seeing her physical strength and how much she's able to kick some ass but then also seeing how she's able to kick like some emotional ass, you know, keeping the family together is really interesting and a lovely storyline for her. In general, I feel like they did a good job. They were able to find out sort of what was happening with the media or stuff like that. The only person whose reaction I did not like at all was Riley's because listen, this man is turning out like he is really leaning into like being a dick thing. I hate that his first reaction is to like bring in the military. The entirety of the second half of season four was Riley coming to the conclusion that the military was not exactly the right choice and that he shouldn't just follow everything that they say. And so the fact that I really thought that had gotten through to him, but now he calls them the first time that there's trouble he doesn't know how to handle is just not great because it makes me feel like all this progress that I thought he was doing in creating his own opinions, trusting himself, trusting the squad at all. Kind of like almost feels like it's undoing all of that and just showing me that he seems to be the same person we met in the beginning of season four. And that's a little bit frustrating because I feel like I love seeing character progress and I really thought Riley had done some character progress, but this feels to really be like undoing it. I was sort of already over Buffy and Riley. I have been talking about this, but I feel like this episode has made me get way over it because I feel like I was over them, but I was like, it's fine. Now I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit like morally opposed to it because I feel like Riley is just proving to not be that great of a guy. I just really need them to have that talk. Of course, I understand that like right now Buffy's going through like bigger things, but um, I really need these two to like talk things out and just break up already because it's kind of painful to know that they're still together. Other than that, in regards to the squad, I feel like they were setting up a potentially interesting storyline for Dawn in regards to like magic and stuff because she seemed so happy when Willow gave her that book. Seems like she's really into spells and stuff like that. And I feel like I had seen some sort of connection in between her and Tara for some reason. So it would be so interesting if Willow and Tara sort of started teaching her some magic because especially her being the key and being something so powerful, it would be good for her to know how to defend herself or something like that in case that Buffy can't always be there, can't step up, doesn't know what's happening, you know? I would like to be able to see Dawn sort of hold her own. This is an unusual commentary for me, but I just wanted to say Xander looked so, um, I was gonna say hot this episode. I don't know, just Xander looked so grown up and just uh, serious this episode. No, he wasn't serious because he was still making his jokes. I just feel like he seemed so grown up and really mature. And I was like, I love that for him. He just looked kind of cool and I really loved it. I feel like we should briefly talk about Tara and Willow just because I feel like if I don't talk about Tara and Willow in my videos, it just feels unnatural. Their scene was so adorable. Tara trying to like stargaze or whatever you call that was literally me when I was taking an astronomy class. So I get it. And I feel like that scene just had such a romantic feel to it. It just seems like such a sweet scene, but it seems so like innocent. But at the same time, I feel like there was so much like chemistry happening in it. I just kept waiting for them to make out, which again is not happening, <laughs> but it just felt like such a romantic thing to be doing. They just felt like so together. And so I like the ways that they're able to really show that they're past the friend phase even though they don't exactly explicitly show them kiss or anything like that. They have a connection and I love them so much and I really hope that we get to see more and more of that relationship, you know, as we keep watching the show. Another relationship we have to talk about is Spike and Buffy because I don't understand Spike right now. This man is completely unhinged. I don't know what's happening to season five Spike, but he is really going through it because he honestly feels like he's losing control over his love for Buffy, which is so funny because like, I don't understand how being in love has made him just kind of go crazy, but I feel like he's just having such a hard time controlling his feelings. And so like, it's just, it's so random. I feel like, you know, even though I knew what was coming in regards to Buffy and Spike eventually having a relationship, this is not how I saw things going because Spike seems to be obsessed with her to a point that maybe it's a little bit creepy. Yes, but also I get it, it's Buffy, but it's just, it's so weird the way that like, he's not trying to form a, bond or a friendship with her right now even though that porch scene says other otherwise but i just mean like 
he's just being a creep. He's being at her house. He's stealing her stuff. He's smelling her stuff. Like, okay, I mean, I'm excited for it just because I want that relationship to happen. So I'm really curious, but it's just so weird. I feel like if that was happening to me, I'm not sure I would be the most receptive over Spike. I'd be a little bit more creeped out, but at the same time, I know she's got to reciprocate those feelings, I think. So it's going to be interesting. I wonder what's going to snap inside of her to make her want to want him back. So yeah, Spuffy's definitely interesting to say the least. I have no idea how it's happening, but I'm intrigued. Yeah, I'm going to assume, like I said, the next episode, we're going to sort of solve this whole Joyce thing. We're going to understand that either she's going to live or she's going to die. And I'm not going to be able to hold myself together. And then I do believe that you know, the whole Glory slash Dawn storyline is going to be continued in the episode after. So not the following episode, because that's got to be Joyce, the one after. In order to confirm my predictions or not, I feel like we should check the name of the next episode, because that will hopefully um, not help me at all, but I will pretend like it does. Okay, the next episode is Into the Woods. Okay, um, like right now, they kind of seemed... Oh no. Oh no, I just realized. Because isn't that an expression? That you're like, that's an expression. What is the expression? Like when you're in danger, I have to Google. Cause don't they say that about, yeah, okay, okay, I am right. Cause for a second I was going crazy and I could only think of the Taylor Swift song. But. When you're out of the woods, that means you're safe, right? So they're saying into the woods, like Joyce is not safe. <laughs> I hate these writers so much. Cause I feel like Joyce going into surgery and getting things fixed, she would be out of the woods. She would be out of danger. <laughs> so into the woods means we're gonna have to deal with Joyce shit and it might not be good. Listen, I feel like all the signs are pointing to her dying. So I'm really gonna, I'm really going to believe that I'm just being fooled. I would rather look like a fool and having, you know, stressing over nothing than actually have her die. My first thought when I heard this title is just that it reminded me of Giles saying that they should go into the woods or something to find the extraterrestrial. So I was like, oh, maybe they're going down that storyline because they didn't decide to do it last time. But no, it feels like we're just talking about Joyce and Joyce being in trouble. So um, I'm nervous. I'm scared. Uh, but I guess I'll see you all in the next episode to see what happens. But I'm really hoping Joyce is going to be fine and I hope we'll see you all back for the next episode. Um, so thank you all so much for watching and let's all do like a prayer circle for like Joyce or something. I'm stressing out. Okay. Um, I feel like that's what I had to say, right? Okay. Well, it was great to see you all and well, I didn't see anybody. I'm freaking out. It's fine. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next episode. So bye bye. <laughs>